Do you want to listen to a podcast? By who? Georgia GOP Congressman Doug Collins. How, how is it? The greatest thing I have ever heard in my whole life. I could not believe my ears. In this house, wherever the rules are disregarded, chaos and mob rule. It has been said today, where is bravery? I'll tell you where bravery is found and courage is found. It's found in this minority who has lived through the last year of nothing but rules being broken, people being put down, questions not being answered, and this majority say, be damned with anything else. We're going to impeach and do whatever we want to do. Why? Because we won an election. I guarantee you, one day you'll be back in the minority and it ain't going to be that fun. Hey everybody, guess what? It's the last Doug Collins podcast of the year, and it ends appropriately on Friday's finest. James and I are with you today. Chip's on leave. Uh, he's up exploring the wonderful wilds of uh, the mountains of Appalachia, so we'll let him uh, come back. We're glad to have James and I here to discuss the year as it was, the things that are going on, things we missed. We talked about a little bit last week. We're going to talk about a little bit more today. Also, I want to give an update. We're going to do a before we get deep into Friday's finest. We're going to get into these the crazy deranged liberals and their effects of trying to keep Donald Trump off the ballot. It's just sort of crazy uh, going on. But a lot of other things going on uh, that we're just going to have fun talking about. Glad to have you with us here on this last uh, Friday's Finest of the Year. Got a big 24 coming up. We're going forward, looking forward to this. One of my best memories is, though, of 23 is the uh, start of Friday's Finest. And this is the last one for the year. But we're glad to have you along with us. So right after the break, we'll be right back to discuss. Hey, folks, you know, when you look out and you see the country and just the disarray it is, you see the Biden administration, you see the wholesale prices have just went through the roof again. Inflation is tearing us up. If you have your finances all impinged in just a, a few areas, if you're just in stocks and bonds, and you're not diversified, I got some news for you. You need a navigator. You need somebody to help you get to where you need to go with those finances. And I can't think of anybody better to do that than my friends at Legacy Precious Metals. You need precious metals in that portfolio. You need gold and silver. And Legacy Precious Metals, the folks there, they're the navigators. They know how to deal with tough times. They know and how to look ahead and, and take your personal situation and make it something that uh, can be workable for you in the long term. Because that's at the end of the day, that's the one you're most uh, concerned about. You need to make sure that your personal finances and your retirement are secure. You need folks like Legacy Precious Metals helping you in that. They are, they will take the time to learn you. They'll learn your finance. They'll learn where your investment goals are, and they'll help you get there. And metals and gold right now in this kind of crazy inflation, in this kind of crazy economy with the Biden's uh, economy is just, uh, you need that help. And Legacy Precious Metals is the one to do that. So give Legacy Precious Metals a call, 866-528-9. 1903-866-528-1903 or you can always visit them online at legacypminvestments.com and you can download their free investor's guide. Legacy Precious Metals, they're the ones you need. They're the navigators to help you through these turbulent times. Hey everybody, it's my pillow's 20th year anniversary and over 80 million my pillows have been sold. Mike Lindell and my my pillow wants to thank each of you and every one of you for giving you the lowest price in history on their my pillows. You will receive a queen size my pillow for 19.98. Regular price is 69.98 and just $10 more for a king size. You will receive diff, deep discounts on all my pillow products such as bed sheets, mattress toppers, pet beds, mattresses, my slippers and so much more. This is a time to try out something other than the amazing products that you've had your eye on. Go to MyPillow.com, click on the radio podcast square, and use the promo Collins, C-O-L-L-I-N-S, to receive this amazing offer on the queen-size MyPillow for $19.98 or call 800-986-3994. This offer comes with a 10-year warranty and 60-day money-back guarantee. It's time to start getting the quality sleep you deserve. You know how I know that? Because I sleep on a MyPillow every night. Go to MyPillow.com and use promo code Collins, C-O-L-L-I-N-S, or call 800-986-3994 today. All right, before we get started on the what is Friday's Finest, I do have to touch on the just the absolute lunacy that's going on right now in the American left and the just derangement of people about Donald Trump. Now, look, I support Donald Trump. I mean, it's, I think he's going to win the primary. I think this is something that you know, we'll discuss in plenty and plenty in 2024. However, look, let's just say this. For the people who are so obsessed with getting Donald Trump off the ballot, and you're making a mockery of yourself right now. You're not even making a mockery of yourself. You just sort of just play just how stupid you can be. Colorado, you have a mock trial, basically a kangaroo court. 
in which uh, no one could get the documents, no one could call witnesses. It was just you know basically one sided, and, and you could speak, and that's about it. Um, to find Donald Trump was ineligible for the ballot because he was an insurrectionist because of tweets, YouTube videos, uh, comments on the news media. Now, the things that would normally never be let into a, a normal uh, trial of any kind. Um, this is what the, you did in Colorado, and the Colorado Supreme Court upheld, at, you know, said that they could actually kick him off the ballot. Now, in, in fairness, uh, as of, I think it's yesterday since the appeal was made this week, the uh, Colorado is saying that Trump will be on the ballot. I mean, after, though, again, a very much of a gift to Donald Trump uh, in the p- fact that he no longer is having to say, hey, look, they're out to get me. All he's got to do is say, read the headlines. They're out to get me. And then, as if I didn't think it could get much worse, as far as stupid, you have Maine. And the Secretary of State in Maine, who is, by the way, not an attorney, who is a Democrat activist and former candidate for Senate. She's appointed Secretary of State. They don't elect him in, in Maine. She's an appointed Secretary of State. Had a hearing in which she took the complaints of three people, two of which said that Donald Trump had committed an insurrection had committed insurrection by the January 6th incident. By the way, we have three here uh, wanting to join in today. Um, in insurrection, because of January 6th, starting Article uh, 14th Amendment, th- Section 3 of the 14th Amendment, which, again, I would just wish that we would read the entire uh, you know 14th Amendment instead of continuing to make a complete buffoonery of yourself. One of the complaints in Maine, this one was the one that just got me completely. One of the complaints in Maine was that Donald Trump should not be on the ballot because since he said he won the 2020 election, he's already served two terms and can't serve another one. That's how stupid this stuff has gotten. But the brilliant Secretary of State from the great state of Maine uh, decided that she unilaterally decided through, again, tweets, Instagram, things in the paper, things in the news, articles on or things on YouTube that Donald Trump had committed insurrection as defined by Section 3, Article uh, amendment, the 14th Amendment, Section 3. Again, not taking any into account anything else going on. This is just the lunacy of the left right now. And, you know, I hear it all the time. Well, he'll destroy the country. He'll do this. He'll do that. Look, they said the same thing about him, about being unconstitutional and doing all these unconstitutional things and getting us into war. And he did none of that his first four years. None of it. For every grand thing they said he would do, he didn't. In fact, he made things better. He helped with the taxes. He helped uh, close our southern border. He helped make us safer. These kind of things are the things he did do. Didn't get us into any wars. But he didn't play by the traditional D.C. We know better than everybody else or the Yale Harvard Club up there that believes that the Ivy League is the uh, only thing that really matters. And yet we've seen how they are uh, just completely messed up the how you define anti-Semitism and is it hate speech? Again, these are the things that we're dealing with. So I, I wanted just to touch on this. I can't let it go um, before the end of the year and just say, folks, buckle up for 2024. If you thought the last election cycles were crazy, get ready for this one because they can simply not let Donald Trump go. And at the same time, I think he's well on his way to becoming the 47th president of the United States. And with that, It's now time for Friday's Finest. James, the man, the myth, the legend, he's been transformed from Dallas back to New Jersey for the last little bit, spending time with the family. James, are we surviving? We are surviving. I even have a jumpsuit on right now. My whole life has changed. Oh, my God. He's back in Jersey, folks. Got a velour jumpsuit, couple chain. I mean, I actually am wearing my old chain, though, that I found in one of my clothes. (laughs) Couldn't bring it to Dallas, of course, but uh, <clears throat> yeah, yeah, that'd, that'd be a little different. Was, my mom was like, "Yeah, we got like, bo-, you know, because when we when we left, my mom turned my room into her office because she loves me so much, and she <laughs> left my brother's room the way it is, which kind of feels disrespectful, but it's fine." And uh, well, we know who the favorite is there, James. Yeah, surprisingly, that was uh, that was a real shock to me. <laughs> no, she actually she actually asked me, and I was like, you know what? That's fine, but I'm going to sleep in his room anytime I come back. So when, ironically, when I came back, I got his bedroom, 
and he had to sleep on the pullout couch. So really, I guess she loves me a little bit more. But there you go. There you go. Uh, yeah, no, she had like all these boxes of all our old stuff, and uh, one of the things in there was my chain that I hadn't worn in a couple of years, and I was like, okay, all right, well, if I'm going to be in Jersey, I might as well go full tilt, and uh, <laughs> I did. So, <laughs> well, uh, yeah, I, man, it's good to be back. I've already been in the city a couple times. It's good, man. I, I do love it here. Okay, I'm, I, since you've been gone for about a year, I mean, you know, you know, give or take. I mean, you've been back and forth, but you haven't really been in the city in a while. Give me your take on New York City, because, I mean, you're a lifer. I, I go in and out of it, and I could tell last year was my first year back in several years, and the city just seemed to change a little bit. I don't know if anything's really changed. I mean, I just think it smells more like weed now because people are more comfortable with it. <laughs> like, that, that is literally the only difference in New York to me right now. It's the same, same crazy people, same wild atmosphere. Uh, we went to a Brooklyn Nets game, so we were pretty much underground for a lot of it, and then we did a little walking afterward. But, I mean, for the most part, New York's the same. Uh, and then when I went into Manhattan, it really wasn't – I don't know. I just – I don't I don't think – I don't know if anything's changed much, but it's definitely uh, – it's it's winter time, so it's packed to the to the gills, you know, with a bunch of tourists. So, I mean, I get it. New York is beautiful this time of year, but maybe if I went like at a rate more regular time, like in April or May or something, you know, there'd be less people. But yeah, it was packed. It was packed. Now, so you can you go from okay? You just made something. For I'm a you know I'm a North Georgia boy. I mean, we ride in there. But you could you go from Jersey to Brooklyn in the subway? Yeah. So all you got to do is <laughs> I listen to me talking about it already. Um, so. Yeah, you could go. You could just take. Got to go to the fourth, play the fifth, and take it over. Took the, <laughs> we took the 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 hobo the train to Hoboken from Jersey. Then you take it to the path, and then you take the path to the four train. Well, you take the path. You go walk through World Trade Center, and then you take the four train that pops you right out to Barclay Center. Literally, you walk straight out, and you're at Barclay Center. Yeah, they they thought oh, it through okay. when they built that building. They were like, how do we get as many people here without yeah, them I mean, seeing the like sky? That. And then they just drag them through the tunnels. You see, that's the part that uh, you're talking about mass, you know, transit and everything. And, and I'm a, a Southern guy who's, you know, it, it's, I didn't grow up on transit, didn't go up on buses, except the yellow, you know, yellow school bus that came to see me uh, and picked me up. So, I mean, it's not something that I need, but as I've grown older, you know, I've run around the world. And, and frankly, you know, the, the tube in London, you know, you got Paris, Rome, all these, I mean, just have amazing uh, subway systems that actually take you where you want to go. Um, New York, I have not ridden New York that much. I have ridden New York. Uh, I, lately, it sort of scares me, to be honest. But uh, but in Georgia, we have a thing called uh, MARTA. And it's okay, but it really, they didn't put a lot of thought into it. And there's a great book called Atlanta Rising. If anybody's out there and wants to go find a book, you maybe have to find it out of print. But it's there and it talks about how Atlanta developed. And a lot of it had to do with segregation. It had to do with the, the separation and, frankly, the, the, the discriminatory attitudes toward the black community in, in and around Atlanta and how it developed. And, and the, the trains go nowhere, James. I mean, literally, the Civic Center Station at MARTA is a half a mile from the Civic Center. That It's very funny you bring that up. And this is probably because, obviously, I mean, racism is was rampant everywhere, but the South obviously has its, uh, has its history. So when I moved to Texas, <clears throat> my brother said one thing. He just says, don't take the dart. I said, what the hell is the dart? He said, just don't take the dart. It's a useless train that you'll probably never need. Um, but nobody really goes on it and any, it's just, there's a lot of homeless people in there, whatever. I was like, okay, whatever. He goes, but it doesn't really do anything for anyone because it doesn't go anywhere. I said, why does it go anywhere? Right. And he goes, because they made the dart specifically. So it stopped before it was, it reached neighborhoods with, uh, with higher minorities. Because <laughs> like, really think about that. Like. They just said it, it's in like four towns. What the hell do you need a train system for in four towns? You could walk through four towns. <laughs> like, yeah. Well, it, it, that that's what they have at Marta. Marta, 
Now, Mardot does have a few stations in, uh, but again, there's a whole history here. And if you ever have driven through Atlanta or looked at Atlanta, if you notice the way it's laid out, um, like when they do the Peach Bowl this week, they'll have some overhead shots of Atlanta. And it sort of reaches sort of northeast along Peach Street, Street um, if you would, and through Midtown, downtown Midtown, up toward Buckhead. And that was the way the affluent South, or the affluent white, is, is frankly, it, it, it appeared. Um, but the problem was, and, and Marta had the same situation, they wouldn't go into other counties, so like Gwinnett County at the time uh, was a heavily Caucasian subdivision in uh, a county just north of Atlanta. Uh, it stopped before it got there because they didn't approve it. Only only Fulton County and DeKalb County approved it. It stopped before it got to Cobb County, which, by the way, is where Atlanta Braves are currently at uh, uh, in in Cobb County. And they they did improve it a little bit when like the uh, the Mercedes Benz, you know, before yeah. uh, this the now we had World Congress Center and all that. Right, you can get off right there. So it, you know, like I use it when we'll go to ball games and stuff. Some. And, um, and it, it works fairly well. I mean, it's, it's not terrible for that, but it's like, is that the only use for it? Because really uh, most of the other stops, unless you're really site specific, you know what I'm saying? Right. It's, it's just, it's just not helpful. Now could transit be helpful in Atlanta? Yeah, it really could. And, and my son, you know, Cameron, who's on the show some Cameron lives in Atlanta and they use it to go to concerts. They use it, you know, if they can get around to places, they'll use it as opposed to taking an Uber. Um, but, you know, it, it, it's just, it's amazing how, you know, things develop uh, like that. And, and you know, it's those things that need to be, you know, hopefully worked on and corrected because, you know, frankly, the folks in those neighborhoods need the transit the most. So, um, yeah, again, we'll see how that all works out. But I, uh, it, it is amazing to me how some cities, you know, again, how the differences is. And, you know, in racism, is prevalent everywhere. You know, the, the interesting part is in the South, we're a little more spread out in the North, you're more packed together, yeah. but yet you still have, you know, Chinatown, little Italy, Germantown. Well, I mean, well, you could, Doug, you could argue it's just that, sort of naturally progressive. Doug, you could argue, and I, I could, you could really argue this, that the most racist state in America is Massachusetts. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm not saying, oh. listen, I don't want to, I, I don't want to, I don't want to leave Mississippi out of this, but I'm just saying like, Realistically, like everybody, every ball player, every but pretty, you know what? This is also based off a lot of the athletes that talk about it. Is there they go everywhere? They're like Utah is pretty white, so it's almost like they don't know. They're they they don't give they don't give them like a a it's you know a pass for being ignorant scumbags. But they're like when I'm in Boston, they know what they're saying, like. They know what they're saying, and they say it loud and proud. Well, and I think that's the interesting issue. Is it, it, And this is what always frustrated many of us in Congress, especially dealing, you know, and I just talked about voting and Voter Rights Act and everything, is they treated the South for years because of some of the things that happened down here um, differently than they did a Chicago, a, a Boston, a, a New York. When you had, you know, again, it was interesting enough, you read some of the histories of the Civil Rights Movement, they never really went into the North all that much. And when they did, it was not very good. Um, and it w in fact, it was very violent at times, you know, and some of the, the keeping uh, the focus on the South where it needed to be at the time. But again, I think it's just a, 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 a it leads into another interesting issue that look race and, and make it very clear here on the Doug Collins podcast. Racism is wrong. It's bad. It's terrible. If you're a racist, you're a schmuck. You're, you want, you're For one sure. of the problems in life. OK, let's just be real blunt about yeah. that. And, um, you know, so, you know, get that out of your head, you know, real quickly. Um, but, you know, it's interesting enough that this conversation led to a really a top line political story right now. The last 48 hours, um, they've been bringing out the fire trucks on the Nikki Haley campaign because Nikki Haley didn't know how to answer the question of how the Civil War started. Oh, boy. And. She said, well, it was about freedoms and giving freedoms and states and, and, and the guy who, and again, it was, a, it was probably a planted question, but it, she never mentioned slavery. And, and interestingly enough, I get folks who comment uh, on uh, the, let's see if I still have it. Uh, they'll, they'll go to the, you know, as I've told you every time, if y'all want to comment on the show, go to the duckconspodcast.com and 
take a look. And I started get. I did an interview last night uh, on Newsmax, and I talked, discussed it. Look, I mean, she should have mentioned slavery. Slavery was the cause, you know, root cause behind a lot of this. And I started getting uh, emails. I had an email from a guy that said, "Hey, I love seeing you on uh, Newsmax, but need to correct you. Slavery uh, and everyone else who thinks slavery was the cause of the civil war. The civil war's causation was brewing since the beginning of the republic. In essence, the civil war caused by the question of states' rights, the doctrine of nullification, controversy over which began." at the Hartford Convention in 1807, a particular tariff on Southern imports to England and France, notably in on cotton. And he continues on, they continue on. In fact, as editorial Horace Greeley, Lincoln wrote, I could, I, if I could save the union by freeing no slaves, I would. If I could save it by freeing half, I would. If I could free it by free, save it by freeing some and leaving others alone, I would. He added that he would be personally opposed, he was personally opposed to slavery, which he was, and, of course, abolitionists were motivating cause. The slavery became the prime cause of World War later when recruitment could not be met and they needed to motivate people to join the military. Okay, here's Just my take- problem. And I so appreciate people writing in into this. But here's your problem. You just described every symptom of the disease without saying the disease was the problem. Doug, this I have such a problem with. I love that, yes, we, first of all, awesome that we have people that are reaching out. But the state's right argument is the most annoying argument on the planet. I'm not saying that is not part of it. No one would debate that states' rights is not part of a, the Civil War, right? Right. However, <laughs> you know it was a big motivation in those states' rights? Slavery! <laughs> Buddy, you you're we're talking about okay. We I, I think what needs to be discussed a lot, and and I again, I actually this this to me just shouldn't be much of a debate. But America was built because of slavery. A major part of it was that. At my, a lot, a major part. Uh, we probably couldn't get half the things we've done, and it's happened throughout history. It's not like this is a new thing. <laughs> Egypt was built the same way. Like this is how this works. It's not good. It's never been good, and it will never be good. That's not the debate here. But to say that their state rights, their state, they want everything that they had. You took well, away all their free money. You- well, the, the triggering mechanisms were, as you went, to, you know, well, some of the triggering mechanisms, yes, was, but it goes back to the very rest of the discussion at the signing of the deck of the Constitution, in which that's how you got the three-fifth person rule. I mean, this has been, yeah, I agree with my my friend who wrote in and said, yes, this is from the beginning of our republic. Yes, and thank goodness he got republic right. We're not a democracy, we're a republic. Okay, let's get this straight. Um, but it was, and it had to be compromised in the Constitution, and it began the rift that began to continue. One, again, you go to agricultural-based economy, you go to industrial-based economy. But then again, the triggers were the compromises in the Midwest and the West on who would have slavery and who wouldn't. And that, again, 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 and I'll, I'll just say this is, and again, not to belabor this, but to go back to hit, to Nikki Haley and just say, is you know, look, you described all the symptoms. Yes, states wanted to do what they wanted. They wanted didn't want government interference. But basically, by saying Nikki Haley, I told this last night on, on the interview. I said, look, I said, here's the issue. I said, is she trying to say that? It was the individual's right to keep slaves. I mean, there's also a way in politics, and, and, it's, and if Chip was here today, Chip would be going just absolutely nuts from a consultant standpoint. He would be saying the best way to get out of a hole if you're in, in a political hole is quit digging. And she just keeps digging. Yeah. And and it's just bad. So, look, I, I think she was on, She had a little bit of momentum, nothing to overtake Trump at this point by any stretch no. of imagination. But in, in New Hampshire was was having some up. And, you know, now the Chris Christie voters who were saying, well, maybe I should go over and vote for Haley because Chris can't win. They're saying, nah, uh-uh. <laughs> you know, if she can't answer a question like that on her feet and then the next day still not really. I mean, you know, there's a comparison here, frankly, and I think it's a comparison and it's not in the same vein, but it's the same type of just get the answer right. And it was the same as the Ivy League presidents, college presidents in Congress yeah. before. I mean, it's not that I believe, and, and I'm going to be kind. I'm, I'm, I'm not thinking they're stupid or they're, you know, I'm not even going to say I'm not thinking they're racist. I just think they're just, they just are so tone deaf to what they're saying that they can't get out of it. It was pretty simple to say anti-Semitism and they couldn't say the words. Yeah, well, you know what they, this reminds me of, Doug? And I, it's not, it's not the same because she 
wasn't, you know, running against her. Like she wasn't the nominee. So this is a little different. And I don't, I'm sure you remember this because maybe you got, maybe because I, I didn't grow up, uh, you in the, in the Republican sphere. Um, remember when Mitt Romney was, uh, running against Obama and he said, he basically called, he basically said like, I don't need the the poor people vote. It was yeah, something the half, around the half that. the people were living off the country. Yes. Right. That statement destroyed him. Yep, it did. It ruined his entire. I remember it so vividly because I, you know, I wasn't, I didn't care about politics at the time. And quite frankly, sometimes I wish I didn't care at all. But <laughs> no, but I'm like, I didn't care. I remember, but I remember hearing that. And my grandfather is, my grandfather's an immigrant from Italy and he's sitting on the couch and he goes, Can you believe what this idiot said about poor people? He goes, he had, he probably could have had, he probably had a real shot at the election. And then he mentioned poor people, leave poor yep. people out of it. He goes, yep. you know how everyone starts out? They start out poor. Yep. <laughs> and I remember like, yeah, a lot of people start out poor. <laughs> well, the, the thing about the statement was, is here's another issue that is, is hard. We're not in the Lincoln Douglas debate days. Okay. You don't have Lincoln spending up for three and a half hours speechifying and you don't have Douglas taking the next day to speechify. I mean, and, right. and explain it. We don't now have that one anymore. on one. Yeah, you've got uh, you've got thirty seconds to a minute to capture what you want to say. And complex issues. This is why I do love the Doug Collins podcast. That's why I love doing this because I can take as long as I need to to explain something. Right. And what he was trying to say was, in a very terrible way, in a very awful way was the rise of government assistance and the rise of those right. who are not paying taxes and in that way. And again, even that, that still had a problem because these same people were still paying sales taxes and other things that they pay. It don't matter if you're poor right, or right, rich, right. you're going to pay a sales tax. So um, again, but it just goes back into this, this whole political mindset that is, you know, that is, is so fluctuating to the, uh, to the ear. And, and but again, I, 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 I've been told I was not a supporter of Nikki Haley. I, I don't think she's primed for the job, and, and, and I've made that clear on, on certain occasions. But, again, to do this is just uh, ridiculous. i tell you an interesting one I, I, is from the political standpoint, James. Um, I've had more younger people. Now, they, they recognize these are people in politics, so to speak, that have talked about the fact that, that they – They've listened to Ramaswamy for a while, and after a while, the stick got old. Yeah. Um, and it was like, because he changed and flip-flopped so many times. And young people, after they figure on your flip-flop and they don't like it, uh, they, they some of them that I know that are Trump supporters say, you know, I don't like Chris Christie. I don't like what he's saying about Donald Trump, but at least he's being Chris Christie. Yeah, you well, know, that will never change. He'll always Yeah, be he's not being somebody he's big. not. Italian and um, he can be, you know, obnoxious and, and that's just the Chris Christie stick. I mean, you live that in New Jersey. Yeah. Um, by the way, can you get away from him? He's a Dallas Cowboys fan. I mean, um, he's, he's the worst person possible. <laughs> it, it just like you're, you're a Gary Dallas Cowboys fan. You're from New Jersey. Like you, you, you shut down the road to Atlantic city, that whole, that you, you know, and, and just, all the things of, I remember, I don't know, I don't know if we've talked about this on the show, but I think he, he wanted to do radio. Uh, uh, he wanted to be have, on yeah, the fan. Yeah. He wanted to be on WFAN, which is a big station here. It's oh the, yeah. I remember that. He wanted to do the sports or something, didn't he? Yeah. So, you know, you know, Mike and the Mad Dog. Yeah. Yeah. They're like the originators or whatever, besides Don Okay. Hines, is Chris but, Mad Dog, whatever. Is that the original? Yes. Chris Mad Dog Russo is one of the original. They, they basically turned sports radio into a phenomenon. Okay, okay. Like and But before him, it was like Don Imus, who was just kind of talking about it, right? Yeah. But anyway, so especially here in New York. But Chris Christie wanted to be on that station. And I don't know if I, – I can't recollect completely because it was a while ago. But I think he tried out doing like a show with someone. Yeah, it didn't And work. people just called in and said the most heinous things about him because we don't care out here. We'll say it to your face. We're not good people. <laughs> like the people who could, this is why I miss, this is the one thing I do miss about radio here in New York is that people will call in and just start cursing. Like it's not even a problem. And then they have to cut the person off. 
that's just the way it is, though. Like, and then Chris, Chris they, they basically gave everyone in New Jersey and New York ammo, and they were like, "Here's Chris Christie," and they're like, "Oh, you fat idiot! Look what you're doing to this state!" Like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I think James, you know, to your point, I mean, people just called in and said, <coughs> "Look, we don't like anybody else. We're going here. This is a, you know, we don't like you on radio, so get off that." But yeah, he was, he, and he got all upset about it, if I remember correctly. You know. It's funny, Doug, because I was um, I was saying that, like, you know, I like it here because of the way people talk to you. Uh, and I, I, you know, I was sitting about the Chris Christie thing. Did I tell you about my doctor visit that I had to have here? No, no, you had a doctor visit. Uh-oh. All right, it's real quick. So I've been, I have, I have a, this, like, lump on my neck. And I, it's not gross, everybody. Relax. But I was a little concerned about it. It's been, um, it's been it, it comes and goes and whatever. So finally, I'm in Dallas. I'm like, you know what? Let me just get this checked. So the guy goes, all right, let me give you antibiotics. He gave me antibiotics for three months. I basically couldn't go outside because of the sun. I was going to turn into a hermit. So I go back to him, and he's like, hey, we might give you more antibiotics, but, you know, you might want to do something else with this. Didn't really give me any direction. And I was like, screw this. I'm going to New York soon. I'm going to get a real doctor. So <laughs> I go I go to the doctor. I go into her office for about – I'm in there for about three minutes. She goes, you have a, she explains what's on my neck. She goes, you have to get surgery. I said, yeah. She goes, okay, hang tight. Grabs a needle, sticks it in my neck, numbs my neck and goes, all right, it should go away for a few days, but you need surgery. Now get out of my office. That was the entire visit. It was the most <laughs> beautiful thing I've ever been a part of. I missed, I missed New York. So they do not cut around. They're like you need surgery. You're an idiot. Get out of my office. I, so what, did you plan your surgery? Why I you did. I'm already planning my surgery. I can't do it here, unfortunately. So I'm going to have to do it in freaking Dallas. They're probably going to turn my neck into a, I don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> it's it's crazy. Like it's, it was such a, this guy was like nonchalant, like, Hey, but I'm like, I don't want to get your haze. I want you to tell me if I'm going to live or die and get me out of your office. But, like, I, I just, it I makes it. me laugh. I'm like, what is with you? Like, it's so, it's such a stark difference. Uh, the people here are just, it's crazy. Yep. And it, uh, I have a doc, one of my doctors down here in Georgia is, uh, did all his medicine and everything and learned, uh, read, did all his other stuff. Spent years up in New York and he's, he's pretty funny when he comes down. His bedside manner is, uh, let's just say, uh, non existent. No, um, they don't care. Uh, uh, this is, I had an issue going on and basically it was like, well, you could just have, uh, you could die. It's like, yeah, what? That, there's no <laughs> cutting around it. Yeah. Like I remember when I was younger. This was like I came back from college and I I was a little I was a little overweight at the time, and uh, the doctor goes, "You eating right?" I was like, "I mean," he goes, "No, obviously you're not eating right. Now get out!" Like, like <laughs> he, he's like, "Don't he?" He's like, "You're an idiot if you think that I don't know that you're overweight." Like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, speaking, speaking of which, though, there they have been some some discussions here and concerns about have we? Uh, oh, by the way, everybody, Cree wants to say hey for the last show of, of the year. They hey Cree, yeah, and, and everybody say hello. Wonderful. Look at her tail wagging. Yeah, she's oh, see, that's so I got my tail. That's a waggy. <laughs> all right, go see Bubby. There you go. Um, all right, yeah, we have. Uh, but there's been uh, some discussion and, and concerns here about uh, have we been walking anymore and have we been getting our butts kicked by any 82-year-old woman? No, 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 no. Um, it's much different. So uh, here, I uh, I know, okay, I'll tell you for sure. I know a lot of people in my neighborhood, obviously, right? But there are people that I, we all know we try to avoid. Let's be honest. There are people oh, yeah. you see, you go down like, there, you I'm about to get into a three and a half hour conversation. And there's one guy in my neighborhood, and I'm not going to say his name, but he's the creepiest man who's ever lived. But yeah. I've known him because I've known his daughter since I'm five. We've been to the same schools, right? But when he talks to you, you, like, he, ah, God, I hate saying this. He looks like Vincent DeFornio's character in Men in Black. For those of you who don't know, it's the guy okay, who's yeah, the Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. okay? He's, he's the, cre and he's so creepy. And I'm on my walk, and I'm doing it around my block, which around four times is almost two miles, right? So I see him. I need to do my four miles. I mean, I need to do my two. I need to hit that number. And I see him at the park right by my house, and I got to make a decision. What do I do? Do I avoid him and just go inside and don't finish my walk? Do I go back up the hill and let him see me like that? Or do I walk towards him? So I had to make this quick decision. 
I just started running. <laughs> I just literally got. I saw. I saw him at the park. I threw my hand up in the air and I just ran. And I did the full lap. This guy, would you believe it, was waiting for me near my house. <laughs> I was like, I don't. Did you? Did it, was me? Was a fat guy sprinting not clear that I don't want to talk to you? Do you know what the kind of effort that takes? So I, 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 not, I, I saw look. him coming up. The, I saw him coming up the block with his dog. Doug, I sprinted into my backyard so fast, I hid back there. I'm like, yeah, I ain't coming out. You ain't getting me, buddy. Yeah. It's not happening. This is the motivation, James. You've now had the motivation to begin yeah. to add a little jogging into yeah, your walk. Yeah, exactly. Like, how do, how do you sprint? Avoid the creepy guy up the street. But, yeah, my walks yep. have just basically been consisting of people going, hey, how are you? I haven't seen you in a while. And I'm like, yep, keep pushing. <laughs> well, see, now when you get back to Dallas, you add, you know, about a, a quarter of a mile, you add a quick, a slow little jog there, right. and you walk again. Hey, right. he gave you the motivation. You'll be running the New York City Marathon. Yeah, no, a couple months, I'll be in there like crazy. No. Um, <laughs> no, hey, my knees hurt, though. I'll tell you that. My, oh, I'm bet, telling I you. Bet. Yeah, I, you don't want to do that a whole lot. Uh, uh, turning attention to the, the, uh, the craziness, so it seems like pro football is on every day this week. Uh, yes. Which is. Is, and also bad uh, bowl games. but um, Oh, yeah. I, I don't even think I've watched one of them. Well, for those of you who missed it last night, we had a Pop-Tart that baked itself and got eight. Right. Yeah, we've, uh, we've come a long way. Yeah, I'll let you go to YouTube and find that one. Um, but, uh, but back to pro. Joe Flacco. The Flacco man is continuing here. The story is so good, Doug. Yeah. You know, someone mentioned that uh, what we should do is let Joe Flacco rest for a majority of the season and then just put him on the team with the best offensive line every year. Yeah. <laughs> just to the end. Let him try <laughs> to – right. here's the crazy part right now, right? Let, let's just let's just do this real quick, and I know they're not the same age. But there's a possibility that Matthew Stafford is going to play a game in Detroit against Detroit and there's a real-world possibility that Joe Flacco is going to play a great game for the Browns in Baltimore against Baltimore. Those are real scenarios we're going through right now. That's amazing. Joe Flacco it's, it's, had no business being in this league. The Jets, no. how stupid do the Jets feel right now? Well, no, how st you know, frankly, the underweight statement here is how stupid do the Browns feel right now? Yeah, that's true. They paid two hundred and thirty million dollars to somebody who's not going to play for them, and Joe Flacco might bring them to a Super Bowl. Joe, what now? Here will be the classic. This will be the ultimate slap in the face. Browns win the world, win, win the World Series, win the Super Bowl, and this year, while they're still paying uh, Deshaun Watson two hundred thirty-four million dollars for doing nothing, they just have to look at it as that's what they're paying Joe Flacco. Yeah. Okay. You know, Joe Flacco, let's be honest, he's not going to be on this team next year, right? Or no, most no, likely won't be on this team oh, next year. Speaking of financial disasters, though, the it, can you can you make up a scenario any worse than the Denver Broncos right now? <laughs> I mean... They're, they're trying to tell us that they're not benching Russ for money is the biggest slap in the face to fans I can think of recently. Yeah, the, back with the Russell Wilson, you know, the issue here is, you know, it started off with that they, he can't, if he gets another $34 million, if he can't pass the physical in March. In other words, I guess he's trying to build in sort of like a reverse uh, injury clause kind of thing. And so now they're going to say, well, fine, you're not going to get injured because we're not going to play you. And and then I hear that they owe him anyway, and they're going to take cap hit, and they've lost all these draft picks and everything else. It's just It's just ridiculous. But then the worst thing that I heard, James, the entire worst thing that I heard was uh, somebody on one of the ESPN shows said, well, where will Russell Wilson end up? And the first words out of their mouth was Atlanta. Doug, you know what the second word was? What? Minnesota. Minnesota. I don't want Russell Wilson. Neither do I, buddy. I don't want Der I don't want Ritter. I don't want Heineke. I want just somebody that can play football. Give me Joe Flacco next year. You know, at least he could. Doug, there's one man that belongs in Atlanta. Yeah. Who's that? He plays for the Chicago Bears. No, no, no. No, 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 no. Are you keep? Hold on. Are you keeping Arthur Smith? I don't think so. All right. If Arthur Smith is fired, 
don't take Justin Fields. But if Arthur Smith isn't fired, we've seen very clearly that Justin Fields can throw the ball to a, a, a good receiver in Chicago. The last few months, he has been nothing but helpful to ju- to a single receiver. The rest of that team stinks. However, if Justin Fields is hooked up with the great mustache himself, Arthur Smith, the Atlanta Falcons are going to win a Super Bowl. I'm telling you right now, that team is loaded. Only, but if you decide to get a real coach who likes to play football like a regular person, then do not take Justin Fields. God, go get Joe Flacco. But, uh, yeah, I'm with you, man. Russell Wilson sounds like a nightmare in general. It's not just the quarterback position. I, he's His stats are fine. That's obviously why people are confused. His stats are better than Mahomes. Yeah. It's not about that. It's about the fact that Russell Wilson's in your locker room, and obviously he's a weirdo. Yeah. Well, he had. Oh, but yeah. When he sent out that serial killer subway tape, yeah, where he's eating subway and trying to, obviously someone's being held hostage in the background. <laughs> like nobody wants that. No. And, nobody wants that guy in their locker room. And he had his own office in the complex. I mean, it, it is so many. Stories. Yeah, he made it weird. You know, people were comparing him to Kirk Cousins. <laughs> And it bothered me a bit. Not the play. I, I, you could argue that Russell Wilson's an all-time better quarterback than Kirk Cousins a million times over. I'm fine with that. But Kirk Cousins is loved in his locker room because he's authentic. Oh, yeah. He's himself. He's a nerd. He's a weirdo. He's he's everything that people make fun of. He where it goes. He shops at Kohl's. He wears khakis. But whatever. But he'll never not be that guy. So you can count on him week after week. Oh yeah. Russell Wilson. Is I how he landed Sierra is the greatest mystery in the history of America. Yeah, I, I don't understand it. I, I I really don't understand it. Anyway, it makes, it makes, we don't have to talk about him forever, but it is bad. Well, speaking of moving on forever, um, I was just up in, uh, and this just ties in very well. Uh, my beautiful bride Lisa got to go with me to uh, New York uh, last week when I did Outnumbered Maria and all the my my hits up there. So she got to go with me, and on our way in from Laguardia. Uh, of course, traffic was a nightmare and it took us an hour and 15 minutes to go to LaGuardia. LaGuardia from downtown Manhattan is probably 20 miles at pushing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> pushing. Yeah. And, um, so we went up through RFK bridge. I mean, we went North and the way that, uh, the driver took us in and then came down, uh, Harlem that side and then came through the park. And came on the west side. And coming down the west side, you go right by the Dakota. Where, for those who remember this time, almost 40 years ago, I guess it was. Probably it's been a little bit over 40 years ago. John Lennon was was murdered. The Dakota, Yoko Ono still lives in the Dakota uh, building. And a lot of other famous people still live in the Dakota. Uh, the most interesting uh, thing that I saw this week after... Another disastrous week in Kansas City was it's now the Yoko Swift. And the comparisons between Yoko Ono supposedly uh, destroying the Beatles <laughs> and Taylor Swift destroying the Kansas City Chiefs. It's it's so funny. It it sucks because like I'm rooting for them. Oh but me too. Yeah. yeah. Listen, listen, Doug, we get this boils down to really one thing. Did we talk about this last time about my our take on Patrick Mahomes? No, go ahead. Did we talk about him no, yet? Good. I don't know if we did. So remind so please stop me if I already said this. But when Patrick Mahomes had his little television meltdown, um yep. and this is just coming from somebody who didn't grow up a rich kid and surrounded by rich kids. The rich kid was told no for the first time. And he didn't react well. Yep. Like, I don't know any other way to put it, right? Like, this kid grew up in a home with a professional athlete, so he had money. Yep. He grew up the best athlete in his area by a mile. Probably was never told no for any reason. He goes to the pros and basically inherits what Alex Smith had, which was a playoff team, but he happens to be incredible, so he turns him into a perennial Super Bowl winner. And for the first time in his career... <laughs> Someone told him no. Yeah. No, we are not counting that touchdown. 
You have to deal with it. And he reacted like a six-year-old getting his toy taken away. <laughs> he reacted like a little rich kid. Yep. But that is an amalgamation of the frustration of him throwing footballs to guys who clearly don't have hands. Yeah. And the only cat person he could rely on is Travis Kelsey. And Travis Kelsey is in love right now, and he's busy. <laughs> he's busy with Taylor Swift stuff. Okay? He's busy with his new with his with his podcast with his brother, and he's busy just being famous and handsome and good at football. The problem is that all the mi- all the mistakes Travis Kelsey makes this year are absolutely blown up in the smithereens because that and because the, the they're not winning games. If they're winning games, no one cares about Travis Kelsey's production nope. ever. Uh-uh. But because all these other receivers can't catch a football, the world is ending for the Chiefs. Guys, what what you're expecting is Tom Brady and the Patriots. That's not ever going to happen again, ever, ever, ever in the history of ever. Yeah. They are their teams are going to miss the playoffs with him at quarterback. Tom Brady is a is a is a is a monster of a human being, and it will never happen again. So stop thinking that's what the Chiefs are. They have a the quarterback acted like a baby. The, they have Taylor Swift in the stands. It, every once in a while, teams don't play well. That's it. Yep. It's that simple. Well, I mean, they're a good team. They're just not, you know, again. But this goes back to remember. Remember when I, we had our conversation? In fact, we got to get the coach back on, maybe do a recap. Uh, and Coach Jay, Ken Jangaley on. It, it's sort of like the first, we, it's his first real checkup with us about in September. Uh, and we, and I made the comment that I said, Coach, does it just look like this year is a meh kind of year? I mean, no real you know, the, the college level, we saw it a little bit. We definitely saw it. They're seeing it in the pros. Um, the Ravens are, you know, you got to feel sorry for the Browns. They're 11 and five and they're still going, they're not going to win the division. I mean, um, this reminded me of, uh, the Braves a number of times back in the 2000, 1990, 2000, they they would win 106 games and Philly or, or somebody would win 107, you know? Um, but then you've got, Detroit, who would be the biggest story in the world, except for the collapse of everybody else. Um, and, and these stories of Flacco and, and others, but it's just like, nobody is, I mean, nobody will sit here and tell you who the Super Bowl champ is this year. You know? No, everyone keeps saying, everyone keeps saying it's the 49ers until they lose a game. Right. And then they, and how, wow. Okay. Let's take a head turn. I mean, this is faster than a, than a left-hand turn in NASCAR. Okay. Brock Purdy has a bad game, all right? Granted. Yeah. Yes. But he's not – I mean, all of a sudden he's back to being Mr. Irrelevant? Are you kidding me? I am. It's so annoying. Guy had a bad game. I'm sorry, but uh, the perfection we expect from these athletes is out of hand. Yeah, he went MVP to basically – nah. And then the, what kills me about MVPs, I'm just sick of it. It's a quarterback award. Quit giving it to anybody else. They don't give it to anybody else. But – if yeah. you do it by stats, okay, and I hate to admit this, Russell Wilson's stats are better than Mahomes and on par with Lamar Jackson. Yeah. he And you know what the other problem is? Oh, we're talking about Lamar Jackson's MVP. Dak Prescott's numbers are through the roof. Exactly. But speaking of which. Like, you're not, you're just, you're basing it, you, you, the, the recency bias is insane, right? Like, I, I love what basketball does because there's – the wins don't matter as much. They, they're important for sure. But, like, I think if your team is in the hunt for the playoffs and, and or at least they're a top a, – a relatively top seed, right? They don't have to be the number one seed. That's the thing. It's like this award is just going to number one seeds. Like, that obviously has something to do with the rest of your team. But, like, last year was a fight between Joel Embiid and Nikola Jokic. Nikola Jokic put up numbers he's been putting up, and Joel Embiid went above and beyond, so they gave him the award. That makes sense to me, right? But in football, it's like Brock Purdy could be putting – listen, you did, I should, Brock Purdy shouldn't have been in the conversation to begin with. He's a good quarterback. That's not up for debate. Christian McCaffrey's the MVP of that team. How can Brock Purdy be the MVP? Right? Like, it, it doesn't make sense to me, but someone like Dak Prescott – who's been putting up historical numbers for himself and whatever, like all of a sudden, cause he had a bad game. 
But guys, that's an impossible. No, you are not going to get the perfection you once got. It's not real. Well, this brings back a couple of angles to go out. We'll hit a couple here quickly, and then we'll move on to a bigger one. But again, Dallas proving it can't win in December, and uh, Correct. Stephen A. having an absolute blast with it. Um, you're having uh, the discussion of I test for MVPs and high, I'm so sick of the Heisman I could vomit. Um, yeah, you know, it, it's make it the quarterback award, which you already give one. And, and again, okay, here, here's a, something for, for me. How Okay, here's my little rant before I get back to my point. How can you have somebody win the quarterback award on ESPN and not win the Heisman when it's a quarterback? <laughs> I know. I, okay, I, I'm <laughs> clueless, you know, on that one. Well, doesn't it, doesn't it bother you sometimes with the Offensive Player of the Year award in the NFL and then you give, they give the – MVP to somebody else. Yeah, is it, that makes sense. If you're not, if the MVP is not a defensive player, which it hasn't been since 1986. Yeah. What are you doing? Yeah, it's just it just doesn't make sense. So we got Dallas that is being Dallas, and I, I don't think they'll make it very far in the playoffs. They may, but uh, I don't. It doesn't look like they will. Um, Miami playing this wild and loose football. Who? But again, you never know what they're going to do. Um, but then you you brought up something that we'll touch on because you're the NBA guy. I am not. Um, the stories surfacing this week over the the schedule or the falling of Christmas being on Monday, that the NFL is now on and is going back and forth with the NBA about the NFL owning the NBA. Jug, my favorite time of year is Christmas, and part of it is because I get to watch. 90 straight hours of basketball. It makes me happy. I can leave it on in the background. And I can just, you know, give people presents, open Christmas presents, talk to people, drink a whole bunch of whiskey in my dad's closet. You know, like, watch really good basketball. And now all of a sudden I got to pay attention to football? Come on, NFL. Give them a break. They got no shot against you. Nobody does. We could watch a president get executed on live television and people would still watch football first. I'm telling you, there's nothing will distract the people from football. Nothing. Yeah, it, it's, it's pretty amazing. I read an article about it. They were talking about, you know, NBA was supposedly this giant worldwide thing and now the, the NFL is going international. And But they made a comment. They said advertisers and yeah. everything else are not concerned about how many people's watching in China. They're concerned about how many people's watching in the U.S., and um, yeah, yeah. It's just it's just a whole whole different uh, you know scenario when you get that. But speaking of the ultimate eye test, I bring this all the way back around to the eye test. The ultimate eye test is this coming Monday, in which you have the eye test final four in college football. <laughs> I am still not over it. I still I, be some bitter, Doug. I, I, I'm I'm trying not to be. Of course, we don't remember. I've already made it clear. I want Alabama to win it all. Okay? They're there. Alabama, roll tide. Roll down tide. I'm, I'm ready for them to win it all. But if I hear one more ESPN hype video about the great Texas defense <laughs> or the Washington juggernaut or the or the Michigan cheetahlots and how all of a sudden – Alabama resurrected itself. They play. They beat Georgia by three in a title game, in which, by the way, they played two, won two at Natties without ever going to the title game. I, I no. just, I mean, I'm. It feels like you should just root for Washington at this point. No, I'm Alabama. I'm rooting for Washington. Roll tide. I'm going to put all my money down on Washington. You know, but here, here'll be the crazy part. Something weird will happen, and Texas will win the national title, and I'll just be sick. Oh, don't let that. I mean, happen. Texas? Are you kidding Actually, me? Actually, Texas barely if it does, my I'm rights. Going, if it does, I'm going straight to I'm I'm going straight to college. Was it College Station? No, no. Which one's the one? Is that what's what's uh what's Texas University? They're in University in of Texas Austin. in Austin. Yeah, I'm going straight there. We're going to party. Yeah, because it'll be a party. That's for sure. If they win, I'm going down there. 
Yeah, it, it would be a party. Um, you may not hear from me from a couple of days. <laughs> but uh, but again, you know, it's just like, really? I mean, Texas struggles you for know, most of the Big 12 schedule. They beat Alabama. I'll grant it. They beat Alabama early in the season. Again, I mean, this is the year. What bothered me the most, James, I'm just going to get it off my chest here. What bothered me the most was going into it, everybody just said, well, Georgia wins, they're in. The minute Georgia lost, the talking heads and the talking points were always about Alabama's now, Georgia's out. Never a discussion like TCU losing the title game last year in the Big 12 and made the Final Four. The 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 CFP the college football playoff committee are idiots. They're probably good people. Need the Lord. I, I mean, I love you. No, no. But but when it comes to this, at least admit your biases. You had to get a Pac-12 team in there. You needed to get a Big 12 team in there. You were going to put an SEC team in there. And they, the only way you could do the SEC and the Big 12 was because you had Texas beat Alabama. Now I'm not even going to get into the fact that you totally bent over a barrel FSU who won every game even without their quarterback I mean in Michigan of course if Michigan would actually play in a real league I mean I I don't get it I, I don't you can't make me understand it there's no way all I will say is is it, you know, and I'm not one of those that believes everybody got paid off. I don't care. I think people just had an agenda. I think they were told what to do. And the talking points went out because, James, I watched the shows after it for a little while. No one made a case for Georgia to get in, except occasionally Kirk Herbstreit and a couple others would say, if you want the four best, Georgia's one of the four best. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if, uh, I don't, the George the Georgia thing is there was an excuse built in for them not to go. And that we've discussed a hundred times was their schedule. And I'm not saying the other schedules were we a lot did better. Three I'm just top twenty five teams. We were the only one we were one of the others right. in that but top it, it four was, who beat three. It was still it was still available. It was still available to them to make that choice. My problem is counting the Alabama win, like all this like the Texas win over Alabama in a consideration when Alabama was struggling. Like, like that makes no sense to me. You can't just be like, well, they're a great team and they struggled in the beginning, but that counts for Texas. No, it doesn't. If you beat a struggling team, you beat a struggling team regardless. They beat Alabama in the middle of benching their quarterback and almost losing to UCF. Right. Yeah, they, they acted like they beat a juggernaut. And they're acting like Alabama's a juggernaut. Now, listen, Alabama's probably going to win this thing because they have the best coach in the history of football and they're playing good football. I'm not debating that. And I really don't care whether it was Georgia or FSU or whatever that got in. My problem is that this system just doesn't reward the teams it should reward. Like, I just – the Texas thing just doesn't I, – I don't understand how Texas got in. It is the only one that bothers me. Washington ran the table, no injuries, makes sense. Michigan ran the table, no in or whatever. I don't know I if they ran it. the table. I get it. Yeah. They, those two make sense. But the other ones, you're just you're grasping at straws to me. And you just want to listen, at the end of, I'm not saying Arch Manning is at Texas right now. Yeah, he might not be it's, there. It, but but he's there right now, right? Yeah, he is. How do we expose Texas, you make them relevant. I'm not saying that's what they did. I'm just saying Arch Manning will be at Texas. If Texas wins, they're much more relevant than they were. It brings up their stupid numbers from their stupid network. I don't know. It annoys me. I, I don't like – this. there's no good system for this, and when we bring it to 12 teams next year, we're all going to be arguing over 13 and 14, but – it's just, I don't think we'll, I, I don't, don't think thirteen and fourteen will get the argument because you couldn't tell me the thirteenth and fourteenth ranked right now and I could care less. Um, right, the, right. I guess you're right. But the the issue here is you know go back to Arch Manning for a minute. Arch Manning's making double what uh, Brock Purdy's making. Yeah, I think what is it two point four and Brock's 800, making eight hundred. Yeah. Um, it's crazy. It is. But anyway, so there's our rant. That's my rant to end the year on 
this and and, and if I like also do not go to the, if you want to go to the Doug Collins podcast, hit the email button and send me an email about it. Fine, go right ahead. But do not use the excuse. Well, next year there'll be twelve and Georgia will get in. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. I mean, you can't tell me. I mean, every time else is you know again. Even if you wanted to go to the default, a three peat, a possibility of. A forty-six and one team, a twenty-nine and zero team that is now one loss by three, and they missed a field goal because of a penalty, and it would have been an overtime. Yeah, you have no credibility. What's the? What was the guy who headed it up? The guy from NC State or wherever? Oh, I don't know his name. I just know that they suck. Worthless. I mean, just just real. The whole thing. Yeah, I mean, you look at these people, and it's like. What are you looking at? They're just clearly more talented by a, a country mile than than. And look, Georgia. Than, here's than here's actually. the key for me. I think even if you went into it today, Georgia, Michigan, Georgia, Alabama, Georgia, Texas, Georgia, Washington, Georgia's favorite in all of them. I, I rest my case. You know what other you know what other thing too sucks about this, and we can get off this if we gotta finish up, but the fact that there's a bunch of players not playing for FSU right now. Oh yeah, there's that, that twenty five players. You know, I know again their problems are all solved next year, so they don't care about. That's why they didn't. That's why this decision didn't matter. All their problems are solved next year. They had one opportunity to have a great last four playoff team thing. Um. But they didn't care because all those teams that they would have dogged that they dogged this year are going to get in next year, and there's going to be no argument about it. Or there'll be an argument, but it will matter less. Well, Florida State may not. I mean, Florida State's got some really right. Issues. Yeah, Florida State doesn't. Yeah, that's that's my that's my number one. Is a team like Florida State isn't going to be back every year. I Doug, I know that Georgia didn't make it, but Georgia's the kind of team that can be back every year. Well, Alabama's I, the I, team. I but the Alabama's another team that can be back every year. Yeah. Well, I mean, look at it. Georgia signed. Seven, I think it was seven five stars last week, or five yeah. five stars somewhere in that range. I can't remember. It, and it equaled up to like eight to ten percent of the total five star recruits. Okay, they they lost quote lost the number one quarterback in the country to Nebraska because that's where his dad went. Yeah, so but also what? the same kid played four different high schools. And but at the same time, signed another five star and flipped a five star cornerback um, on the same team, Buford. And still maintain the number one recruit. Yeah, class. of course they do. I mean, I mean like they, it's, it's going to be. Fun. It's a road to the NFL. Yeah, well, it is. And and by the way, RBU running back U is Georgia. Cool. Just look at the NFL. And and Alabama. To a point, but you mean look DeAndre? I mean, you look at the running backs from Georgia right now. Zeus out at uh, uh, Oak at Las Vegas. You got DeAndre in Philadelphia. I mean, you've had Sony Michelle. I mean, Chubb. If Chubb would, can you imagine what Chubb would be doing right now? Nick. Um, oh, Nick. That that is still my. That is that one annoys me the most right now. That yeah, injury is it, like crushing me. Yeah, pretty wild. All right. Well, get what? What's your what's your final thought for the last episode of the year, James? Oh man. Um... We had a we had a we did this last week, but we had a very weird year, and a lot of weird things went on. Uh, spy balloon, the speaker of the house, uh, <laughs> zoo animals were everywhere. Yeah. Um, but I think twenty twenty four is going to be hectic. Do not expect anything less. We have an election coming; it's going to be wild. But I just try to focus on the good things, people. Like yeah. you know. Maybe Kirk Cousins coming back to the Vikings. Uh, maybe the Mets will turn it around. Um, maybe Dallas won't be 750 degrees in the summer this year. I don't know. Think of all the good things that could happen and should happen. Uh, Taylor Swift tour is is probably going to keep going, and that that can only be good for everybody. And truly, like again, it is going to be a really hectic year in politics. So for those that care about it, the way Doug does, and the way a lot of people in this business do, breathe. Take a step back because it's going to be madness. Yep. And people are going to be insane. So that, but 2024 is only going up from here, boys. 
There we go, baby. We're at the. Well, look, I think it's going to be one of those. I said it last night. I'll say it again. Buckle up. Twenty twenty four is going to be a, a wild, a wild ride. Um, but it's been a great year. We've been introduced Friday's finest. We've had a great year on the podcast. We're always glad to have you with us when we go. But I have to leave you with this one. Not only do I want you to, you know, be safe, be merry, have a great year. Take care of yourself first, because when you take care of yourself first, you'll be able to take care of everything else. But after all our discussions, the funniest uh, tweet was just sent to me here just a little bit ago by one of my kids. And it first started out with uh, Joe Flacco on the bench. He's sitting there and it says, when you throw for 300 plus yards in four straight games, it's past your bedtime. He looks like he's going to sleep. on the I, I saw that. And then this person retwe- quote tweeted it and said, practice against Ed Reed and Ray Lewis every day for 10 years. And y'all thought he would fold the sauce guard. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That's a, that's a great way to go about it, folks. We don't fold anybody here on the Doug Collins Podcast. We just help, it, help you laugh through the day. We've learned you learn, and we keep you informed. That's what we want to do here. Go to that button, subscribe to us, get ready for 2024 with us. We're glad to have you with us. And uh, Chip will be back with us uh, next week for Friday's Finest. And we will see you then. Take care.